Hi, everybody. Good evening from Clashing. Thank you so much for joining me for this last live stream from a very, very exciting week. I started with a free three day wet felt and eco printing boot camp and continued then with the launch of my new membership club and answered your, your questions over the last few nights. So I'm just going to um, let everybody know in case some of you are watching for the first time. My name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist. I live and I work in rural Southeast Ireland wet felting, eco printing and growing my own plants to use in the studio, dye plants. Those are, <laughs> it's my life really. And I'm passionate about sharing this with other people. And I really like to work in an environmentally mindful and health conscious way wherever possible. So I work without using traditional powdered mordants for almost all of what I do in the studio. So I'm delighted to see, and um, there are already people here. Hi, Brigida, um, Sandra, Junie, Chicky D, Julian. Wow, it's fantastic to see you here. And I know that some of you are already members of the club. So all I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to do a really quick recap about the very basics that I covered during the boot camp at the start of the week. And I'm going to just mention one simple way, or, or maybe not one simple way, a couple of ways that if you don't have access, if you're concerned that you don't have a big enough pot, or if you don't have the correct heat source to heat a big pot, there are a couple of things you can do or you might have access to. Maybe as well, you live in a region where fire is a hazard and you have to be careful and not use a wood, wood fired boiler. So, <coughs> excuse me oh <coughs> it, it's I'm not hoarse but it's definitely the end of, uh, at the end of a long week that's been extremely extremely exciting so what I am going to do is I'm just going to start and shoot through the basics then I will explain about um different pots or cooking methods and then I will answer your questions so I'm going to um, start, me too, Monica, by the way, I'm going to start here just with a little recap um, about eco printing in the dirty pot. So Sandra, the fact that you don't want to use powdered chemicals, that's absolutely wonderful because the dirty pot method of eco printing is harnessing the actual metal, the composition of the pot itself. It's harnessing the composition of the pot <coughs> and whatever we put in it to affect the color and the results that we get on our eco prints. And this particular pot, it's my largest one and my favorite pot. Um, that's a very old French pot. It was used on a farm for cooking potatoes. But the piece I'm taking out of that was wrapped on rusty metal. And so there's a really interesting reaction with the rusty metal, the leaves, the liquid in the pot. And you can get just wonderful results. So regardless actually of whether you use mordants, the chemical, the powdered chemicals or not, it's really important that you wash anything that you're going to eco print very um, carefully beforehand and then that you soak everything overnight. And the reason for this is you want to make sure that the fabric has absorbed all the, the water and it all the fibers have sort of relaxed if you think if you get um <clears throat> if you get into the bath where i'll be heading after this live stream <clears throat> when you get into hot water you really relax think of your fiber and your fabric as relaxing when it gets into that overnight soak and in turn when you then eco print it's more receptive to receiving the color so if you're walk <clears throat> working with bought fabric you need to give it a good wash first and this could be fabric that you've bought from a supplier and it might even say it's already prepared for dyeing or it could be upcycled garments that you've bought in a second hand shop it could be fabric maybe that a friend has given you um i'm always on the scrounge when friends are <laughs> revamping their wardrobes i look for natural fabrics in pale colors and i eco print them 
So give everything a really, really good wash. And I like to use a gentle, warm olive oil soap. But you could also use a coconut oil soap, anything that's very natural, ideally with no artificial colors and no, no artificial scents. I have got absolutely no problem with beautiful organic oils. And in fact, one of the people who has already joined um, the Ecoprint and Wet Felt Club is um, a friend, an online friend called Maggie Alexander. Now, I actually bought beautiful handmade soap that was scented with clove bud oil. I bought that from Maggie at um, Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival many years ago, but we didn't actually know each other then. And then we became friends online. So if you have, um, if you know anybody who, who makes a good quality handmade soap, I have no problem with scents providing they're all natural and not artificial. So the sort of simple supplies then that you need when you are eco printing in the dirty pot, you need things like metal pipes, you can work without them, but, but you will get better results if you work with them. Each type of metal will give a different effect and help achieve different colors. And that's something that I will be really sharing more about in the club, because what I will be doing will be sharing my own work as the months progress in our private Facebook group. And um, maybe making something or folding a garment in a specific way and using a specific pipe in response to a question but they won't be edited videos they will be really behind the scenes videos as if you were really with me here in ireland so um these pipes are really important to me i also always use vinegar you can work without it but you will get better prints if you have some vinegar and scissors and vegetation that's really all you need your fabric your pot your heat source now the best pot to start with is an aluminium pot if i could only have one pot um i think it would i mean i personally love a cast iron pot but the most useful pot is an aluminium pot because you can get a really dramatic range of colors in an aluminum pot. And the best heat sources are gas or wood fired. Something that will bring that pot up to a boil really, really quickly. Laura, I can see you have a wet felting question popping up. I will answer that in a minute for you. So I like to add a good chunk of rusty metal to my pot and that helps give strong, washable and light, fast prints. So in effect, what is happening is the metal is acting as a powdered mordant wood, but in a milder form. So if you use a powdered ferrous sulfate, which is iron, you use very, very little. But if you use the metal iron, the physical iron like I have there, I would leave that iron in the pot for the whole time that I was processing my pieces, or maybe a horseshoe or something else as well. Um, and again, that's something that you learn a lot more about. So my favorite pot of all is cast iron. This is a wonderful pot that uh, Caroline Nixon, my great buddy, wonderful, wonderful eco printer. Um, also, she's just does amazing work with Mordens. Caroline and I were on a, a wonderful trip to France and I had my pickup truck with me and I could not believe when I found this beauty in a brocante, which is uh, sort of like a cross between a salvage yard and an antique shop. So uh, the inner portion is cast iron where those two handles are that actually drops into the outer frame and the outer frame is galvanized and there's a grate at the back and I put my um, fire in there, my wood burning fire. And here's a piece that came out of that pot. And I just love the complex background colors and effects I can get from this pot or from any cast iron pot. And these leaves here are mixed eucalyptus leaves from my own trees. It was interesting because when actually I had this photo shoot, um, it, 
it was really interesting because the photographer was saying, oh, it's such a pity, it's misty and there's the steam. And he was trying to get it. He was thinking I'd, I'd want clear background to see the mountain. And I was going, no, no, no. I want it to be, you know, it's like I'm a witch almost. I want you to see the steam. So I was really happy then with the, um, with the photo. I was very happy with the photo shoot when I saw all the pictures um, afterwards. Um, hi, Veronica. Welcome. Chilean in Germany. <laughs> wow. Wow. OK, so I'm also going to recap now from um, the felting perspective. And Laura actually has a question here. So Laura is, is asking, when felting, do you recommend using merino roving or merino batting? <clears throat> now, Personally, I love using um, bats, but most people find roving easier to access. So it, it doesn't matter whether you use roving or bats, and I will be using both Laura. So just use whatever you can access that's the easiest and or maybe the best value or that you personally like. It does not matter um whether it's bats or roving there's just slightly different way of laying them out so um <laughs> uh no further and i hope you got the email i sent you earlier and you're all set up now um for the membership and um we'll chat next week so um Ferda is in Turkey. So we're truly an international group here, which is really, really, really fantastic. Yeah, Kimmy, I love all the moody images from that particular photo shoot. I was actually really lucky that it was a, a misty day and that I took the time and effort to get that pot going. So anyway, let's just move on to this here. So when you're wet felting to eco print, use natural undyed wool if you want to eco print because you well, I'm assuming you want the pattern of whatever you print with to stand out against the backdrop. So it's important that you print or that you print on a pale color. But you can use natural undyed gray or black wool to to emphasize areas. So I could have put a little band of black, for example, around the opening of this felt vessel, and that would have emphasized that. And then when it would have been eco printed, the black would have blended in subtly when it would go through the pot, but you would have that emphasis of that darker opening on, uh, around the vessel. So it is very interesting using a small bit of dark natural undyed wool. I would not recommend that you use commercially dyed black or any other color because we're boiling our pieces for up to five hours, depending on what vegetation we're using. Most often we're doing two to two and a half hours, but if you're using commercially dyed wool, it can um, release color in the dye pot. So let's go to um, this one here now. Okay, so use natural undyed wool. And if you don't put any embellishing fibers on your wool, you're going to get a very matte finish. So this is a very flat, it's got life because of the, the printing and the background color, but it's a flat matte finish. Whereas if you add cellulose embellishments, such as tencel, onto the surface of your felt while you're laying it out, these don't absorb the dye color in the pot the same way as wool and silk, so they will stand out more on the surface. And here you can see the crinkled white um, and there's a little shimmer from another fiber called Firestar there as well. And believe it or not, they, they are both two sides of the same piece. Then you can also add a layer of fabric. This gives different sur surface effects and it also um, can be used maybe as the back of a heavy piece like a carpet or a wall piece. Nuno felt is a combination of a large quantity of fabric and a very, very light quantity of fiber. And so um, what happens actually when you are Nuno felting is because you don't have as much fiber, let's say these are shingles of fiber and 
with regular felting, depending on what you're doing, if you were doing a wall piece, you might do two layers of felt, one with the fiber laying in that direction and one with the fiber laying at right angles. But with Nuno felt, you'll have a layer of fabric and you're going to have an extremely light layer of fiber. You mightn't even have fiber all over the piece. And Nuno felt is something that I will go into in quite a bit of detail in the Ecoprint and Wet Felt Club. But the reason Nuno felt shrinks as much as it does is that if you think these are the fibers, there aren't two layers, there's only one very light layer and the fiber may not even be touching. So it can be very, very light. And as you felt, it's got a lot further to travel and shrink before it combines with, with the piece of fiber beside it and it keeps shrinking. And so the, the less fiber you have with your um, the less fiber you have, the more your piece is going to shrink. And you learn more, obviously, with experience. But if you are a Nuno felting, you need to make sure that your layout at the beginning is significantly larger than you intended to be when you end up. And all my three-dimensional pieces, such as bags, garments, hats, etc., are reversible. They can be turned inside out. They have different prints on the inside. But when you're choosing to eco print to felt, it's a much better idea to work with a dark fiber behind whatever fabric you are combining, because this is going to show the prints off to their best advantage. Here you can see I've chosen black for this particular piece, a wall piece. And here is the close up of that piece. Now, this was a wall hanging that was from my dry stone wall series. And that actually was the first piece to sell at a solo exhibition I had um, actually quite a few years ago now, as it turns out. It seems the years go very quickly. Anyway, if you use freezer paper, you can iron the freezer paper onto your fabric, let's say silk in this case, you can cut shapes out and then you peel the paper off and then you have very even shapes that you can add onto your, um, into the layout of your felt because you can see here there's an obvious design to this piece, it looks like a dry stone wall. Now, um, okay, I'm just going to leave that there. So, I just wanted to say that there may be some of you who don't have access to what I would consider the best heat source. So you may not have gas, you may not have a wood fired pot, you may not want to cook in your kitchen, you may want to set up something outside but there's a fire hazard or you want to set something up in your garage. Now it's possible to use any sort of a hob, you know, like a, a cooker. Um, you can use electricity. I did have a question from somebody overnight and they were um, living in New Zealand and they didn't want to process in their house and they wanted to use electricity in their garage. So you can definitely use a hob. The important thing is that you can bring your pot of water to the boil. Now, often with electric hobs, it can be difficult to bring the pots to the boil, particularly if the pot is old because it may not have a flat bottom. But let's say this here is the hob and it's got four or it's got two, two um, hot plates on it. There's absolutely nothing to stop you, um, nothing whatsoever um, to stop you putting that pot over two of the rings, three of the rings, four of the rings. So just think about... Um, think about that because it may well be that you might be able to you might have an old hob that came out of your kitchen when you were revamping your kitchen you could set that up in your garage you could get a fish kettle which is a long pot and i have big pots and i'm teaching but to be honest i have a big fish kettle and it fits between two and five bundles depending on how big a piece i'm actually working on and if you really want to do meaningful prints, honestly, five bundles is quite a lot to, to print in one session. It's better not to try and do too much if you want to have really good design and prints. It's just a tip. So a fish kettle could be an option on a hob. 
Uh, it's not a topic for now, but it is something I will touch on in the membership again if people are interested. Um, I was in the middle last year of writing or experimenting, doing a new workshop, which was all about eco printing, but using a microwave for processing. Microwaves are actually really good to process eco prints in. There are different things you need to be careful of. Um, for example, to make absolutely sure that your liquid doesn't run dry. I did years ago have an eucalyptus explode, <laughs> literally it went on fire and it exploded and came through some silk when I was doing a sample. But I am working on um, things that I can share with the club about eco printing using the microwave. But of course you cannot, um, you cannot um, put metal in it. And Jane, I am laughing hysterically here. So Jane doesn't suggest a dishwasher. I saw online today um, that Jane um, <laughs> Jane needed to steam something and there was a problem. So she steamed her bundle in her dishwasher. I actually thought it looked great, Jane. It may not have been what you thought it was going to be, but I thought your prints were really, really good. Um, so some people are having excellent success using a pressure cooker. Now, I have um, not, um, I've not used one myself for eco printing because they're, they're not the largest um, pots, but actually they're very, very efficient. And I know people who use them regularly. So a pressure cooker could be something to consider if you're working in a smaller space. And then other people are working very successfully in what we don't have here in Ireland, I think they're called electric turkey roasters. They're not slow cookers. They come to a higher temperature, but some people are having extremely good results with them. So there are different options and it's something we'll explore in the club as well. We might build up a bit of a database of knowledge about those alternative methods of processing bundles. So um, excuse me one second now while I just check. So um, yeah, um, Ferda, um, I did send you an email and um, we'll sort out your account. Um, maybe you missed that email. A separate email I sent you this morning and we'll get your account sorted out on Monday or Tuesday. I'm just waiting to hear back from somebody about taking credit card payments. So Pam, thank you so much. Um, I'm really delighted that you've enjoyed everything. And for anybody who's not joining the club, I would never want people to feel that they had to join, um, that there was any compulsion to join something that I'm offering. I will continue to be uploading videos regularly to YouTube and answering questions, et cetera, et cetera. So there will still be plenty of knowledge shared. However, um, that um, so don't feel you won't get information, but the club is really implementing it and there's more obviously. Um, and okay, so I'm just gonna answer a couple of questions. Yeah, Jane, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm sure we'll hear about that, that dishwasher experience. Um, Ferda, you don't need to worry to lose your chance because I've tied you in. So you are definitely in Ferda. Ferda is in the unlucky position that PayPal doesn't operate in Turkey anymore. So Ferda, I just need confirmation for something tomorrow and we will sort you out. Um, Laura, you cannot imagine the amount of work I've done behind the scenes. So um, I that is something that I I'm very, very new to Kajabi and I am a member of another um, platform where they use Kajabi and I do have the app. So I don't fully understand what I need to do to send you the invitation, but absolutely, Yes, I'm more than happy to do that. I just need to get a couple of days and the onboarding done, and then I can really knuckle down to getting to grips with everything. For the moment, I want to be able to upload the videos and the text and to chat to you all and interact. And next week I have two nights booked uh, where there's no internet. So I will be out of commission on um, Wednesday afternoon, from Wednesday afternoon until Friday evening, in fact. So um, although I will have content that will be getting uploaded, that will be scheduled for you. So does anybody who is here now tonight have any questions you would like me to answer um, in relation to maybe whether the, the um, 
club is suitable for you or whether you have any follow-up questions from the boot camp. Because if you don't have questions, I'm going to say good night now. But if you have questions, I'll give you about 30 seconds to put them in the comments. And for anybody who's watching this as a replay, please feel free to, um, to ask me questions. But the important thing to note now is that um, the membership, the club, the opportunity to join as a founding member um, for 49 American dollars per month or an annual subscription of 490. That is only available until this evening, until one minute to midnight Irish time this evening. So it's now half past six. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, five and a half hours. And that offer is over forever. The next time that that the membership is offered. It will be in approximately five months time and it will be $99 per month or 990 for the year. So I see there are a few comments here, let's see. So the cancellation policy, excellent thing, Jody. So there is um, a 14 day cancellation policy um, for anybody who's joining now, full money back, no quibble guarantee whatsoever. Then if, if, for example, you have chosen the, the annual subscription, which you are already getting um, a discount, you're getting $98 off because you're paying for 10 months rather than 12. If you don't cancel within the first 14 days, that's it. You, you're locked in for the year. Um, with the monthly subscription, you can stop at any time and it will just, you know, it will stop. You won't have to pay the following month. And all of that is automated in Kajabi. So, um, yeah, so that that's that, Jody. I hope that answers your question. If you, if it doesn't just come back, so full 14-day money-back guarantee now. And then at any stage, you can stop the, um, the monthly subscription. But after the 14 days with the annual subscription, then you're locked in for that first year. So, um, okay, so now we have a... Ah, uh, okay, so Veronica, um, I don't, I, I think I have used this and it wasn't my favorite fabric to use, but if you remember um, earlier in the week during the boot camp, uh, there's also a video from my previous boot camp. It would be boot camp day three of the eco printing in the dirty pot. If you follow the instructions in that video and you use your homemade rust water to print your cotton, that will give you the very best results unless you're using traditional powdered mordants. So give it a try, give it a really good wash before you so put it into the rust water and away you go. Thanks, Pam, I'm hoping to, but I, I'm really excited to get it. I, I'm, I'm gonna work on content tomorrow, which will be delivered later in the week. Um, uh, uh, and then the onboarding on Tuesday, but I've also got an important business meeting tomorrow. And then my two days off, I'm really looking forward to that, but I've been blown away by the response this week. It's been phenomenal. And it's just so wonderful for me because there have been a lot of registrations uh, considering it's, you know, it's not a $5 product. And it's been really great because it means that I now have quite a few months to really, really work with you all and get everything really fine tuned and spend studio time together without having to worry about writing a new online workshop. So I really appreciate all your support and I will do my absolute utmost to give you all my time and concentration. Uh, Tammy, you're so welcome. Um, okay, so, so the onion skins. You need to put as many onion skins in as will give you the color you want. And you will only discover that by experience. But if you have a pot, um, Chicky, and you're intending on, let's say, eco printing three silk scarves, and you have a pot, I would be putting in several handfuls of onion skins. I wouldn't be putting in just skins from three onions you know, you want a lot of onion skins. So a tip for you all is um, I, um, in Ireland, certainly in rural communities, the butcher, you know, where you buy meat in the local small town, which I have to drive to, obviously, 
he also has basic vegetables and he would have things like homemade jam and he would have eggs from local producers. So he, he sells onions and he collects all the onion skins that are left in the boxes for me and he puts them in big sacks and then when I'm getting my meat, I get the onion skins. So you can see if there's a green grocer or a butcher or somebody locally that will save onion skins for you. However, <laughs> Do not do what a friend of mine did and ask her local um, restaurant to save them for me. And they put them with all the white fleshy parts of the onion and they closed the bags. It was the most rancid smell. And of course, I had to thank my friend, but they were unusable. You only want those dry outer papery bits. Great, Jody. Thanks very much. Um, no, Esther, you don't need the Kajabi app. Um, you can look at everything um, online, but some people who are familiar with using Kajabi as a platform may choose to have the app. And to be honest, I don't fully understand the implications of it myself. So I, I always look at the program that I'm registered for. I look at it on the Internet, not in the app. You're very welcome, Veronica. Thank you. Hey, hey, Brenda, waves. Brenda's um, in a neighboring county, almost a neighboring county to me. Um, waves back at you, Brenda. Um, perfect. So, um, Chicky, that's great. So I've answered that question for you. So I think then that's really everything. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you all so much. And again, for those of you who are not joining the club and for people who, who are in the club, don't forget, I do have a public Facebook group and that you're very welcome to join there and you can upload images of your work and ask for feedback. Um, it's all to do with wet felting and eco printing without the mordants. So, OK, so we here we have. Um, OK, Mary, I'm really excited, too. It's going to be fabulous, Mary. Thank you so much. Um, so Shona, yes, I have used red onion skins and I much prefer brown. Brown give golden, rich, vibrant colors and oranges, golds, browns. The red give more of a purpley color and then they can shift a little bit green after you wash them out. They don't release as much dye and they would not be my favorite skins to use. I still love them, but they're nothing like as good to me as brown. Brilliant, Esther. Thank you. Um, Janet, not now, I'm not going to post the monthly topics, but um, because um, we need to get going. Um, and I'll explain a lot more about how everything will work at the onboarding call on Tuesday, the Zoom calls. And I will be getting emails out to everybody who has joined. They will go out after midnight Irish time, but I, I still need to get that fully set up for this evening and I need to get a bit of a break and some food first. Um, and if I totally fail tonight, the emails will go out first thing tomorrow morning and there will be the links to the two Zoom calls on Tuesday and we'll go from there. Um, Yes, wonderful question, Rama. Um, thank you so much for opting for the yearly subscription. Absolutely, I believe, and that is something that I will check. I believe that, um, let me just, um, I'm just going to make a note of this, excuse me, writing here. Um, as far as I know, what will happen will be about a week beforehand or maybe two weeks beforehand you will get a reminder and emails, you know, telling you when the annual subscription is coming due and giving the, you the option not to renew or to or to stick with the program. But that is something I will check. But but yes, you will definitely um, I would be 99.9% .9 sure you will get a reminder and then you will get a second reminder um, just to make sure um, about that. So, yes. And um, Jody, you are so welcome. Thank you. Um, Junie, thank you so much. See you on Tuesday. And thank you so much as well, Ferda. Um, virtual hug back to you all. I'm going to say good night now. Thank you all so much. And I know I'm going to see a lot of you on Tuesday and every week from then on, probably. So thank you so much. Over and out, everybody from Clashine.